fellow Cameroonians. First, I want to wish a happy Easter to all our Christian brothers and sisters. Secondly, I wish to extend particular greetings to all who live in the southwest and northwest regions of Cameroon. It would seem in the last 72 hours, there has been quite a frenzy about a video snippet from the conference I spoke at, at the George Washington University Institute for African Study. This frenzy has resulted in some persons in the diaspora calling me, and I quote, an enabler, an enemy of Anglophones, and demanding that I should be arrested and tried, unquote. Thank you to all of you who have reached out to me out of concern for my safety and well-being. You are right to be concerned, and I thank you for your love and affection. Please be assured, I am serene and focused on the fight for change for Cameroon as I have been for decades. There is absolutely no fear in my heart, no fear of visiting the southwest and northwest regions, which I will do upon return to Cameroon, no fear for my life. Let me confirm some of the statements made at George Washington University once again. There is an Anglophone problem in Cameroon, which is over 60 years old. In the current phase of the Anglophone crisis, which erupted in October 2016, the BIA regime holds 100% of the blame for the instigation and escalation of the crisis. The BIA regime refused to dialogue, refused to address fundamental problems, and responded to nonviolent protests with violence and killing. The BIA regime cut off the internet for three months to the Northwest and Southwest. The BIA regime radicalized the population and led to the taking up of arms by some groups. Now, let me get to the part of my comments at George Washington University, which some have found controversial. The fact that the BIA regime is absolutely culpable does not negate the fact that those who decided to take up arms to fight for independence measled and lied to the population from day one and have continued to do so for the past three years. The BIA regime has killed Anglophones indiscriminately and committed all sorts of abomination on the population. This does not negate the fact that those who decided to take up arms have also used intimidation and violence from day one. It does not negate the fact that their choice to take up arms has created a situation in the Northwest and Southwest regions, which is catastrophic and untenable for the population. In fighting the BIA regime, we are fighting a regime which has lied to us, manipulated us, intimidated us, and used corruption and violence on us for the past 37 years. It is inconceivable to me that those who want change would use the same tactics of lies, manipulation, intimidation, corruption, and violence on the population while trying to bring about that change. Whether it was the intention of those who fight for the independence of the North, Southwest and Northwest regions or not, that is what has happened and continues to happen on the ground. We can no longer keep silent about it. A wide variety of political opinions exist among Anglophones. There are those who believe in an armed fight for independence. There are those who believe in independence, but not in an armed fight. There are those who believe in regional autonomy of various types, that is, federation of various types. And there are those who still believe in the unitary state. Yes, Anglophones who are part of the BR regime are still Anglophones. 
personally, I believe in what people call federation. However, all the different opinions have a right to exist and a right to be expressed. We cannot build a foundation for change if we intimidate and are violent with those who have a different opinion from our own. I strongly and openly disagree with the maintenance of the status quo of a unitary state. I also strongly and openly disagree with the strategy of an armed fight and have stated clearly since 2016 that I believe this strategy will endanger the lives of Anglophones and will do little to advance their rights. The facts on the ground today have confirmed that belief. I will not allow anyone to intimidate me or stop me from expressing my opinion. No threat of violence or so-called arrest will affect me. I have fought one oppressor in the person of Mr. Bia and his regime for decades. I will certainly not be afraid of Facebook oppressors living thousands of miles away from the people they say they are fighting for or any other oppressors in whatever form they may come. From October 2016 to September 2017, the fight for Anglophone rights was largely nonviolent. During that period, we counted less than 100 deaths, and all of these deaths we could clearly attribute to government forces. There were zero refugees, zero internally displaced persons, zero villages burnt. The choice to take up arms gave the Bia regime, which we all know to be violent and repressive, the foreseeable opportunity to intensify its violence. From September 2017 to date, the fight for Anglophone rights has included armed groups. During this period, we are counting at the very least 1,000 dead. Deaths which can be attributed to government forces, but some which can also be attributed to armed groups. We are counting 50,000 refugees, close to 500,000 displaced persons, and thousands of persons kidnapped. The education of an estimated 2.5 million children is in jeopardy for three years today. The economies of the Northwest and Southwest regions are in shambles and fertile ground has been created for extreme violence and criminal behavior. The population lives in poverty, fear, and confusion. In my opinion, it is time to reassess the armed strategy and define new ways of fighting the Bia regime that do not put Anglophones in the midst of violence, kidnappings, murder, and general mayhem. You can agree or disagree with my opinion. What you cannot do is intimidate or threaten me. Some have even issued veiled threats to my life. <laughs> I am amused. At the very least, 1,000 people have died in the past three years. My life is not so special. If I lose it and Cameroonians who remain behind gain freedom and better lives, you can imagine I made my peace with that many years ago. The Bia regime has its soldiers. Those who are fighting for independence have their armed groups. I am part of that majority of Cameroonians who have no guns and no army. We will, however, not be intimidated or silenced by those who have arms on either side. We will speak our minds and fight for our freedom without violence. You have killed many, and you may still kill many more, perhaps including me. 
know that however many you kill, there will still be others to rise up and fight for their rights without violence and with guns and without guns. We believe in our country, Cameroon. We believe in our future. We are on the ground fighting for our rights. We will not be silenced. My name is Kawala and I thank you. Sessionist march and you're gonna put up your flag on the, on the institutions of that country. What do you think is gonna happen? And you know what they told people? That they were coming, these diasporans. They said we will be in Cameroon on October 1st. They lied to the population and told the population that the UN ships were in Ambas Bay. That's the... the, the, the That's what they named the, it after, it's the, the bay the, off the, the coast of Lumet. Of, 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 of Lumet. They said, no, the UN ships are there. They're there. We're going to support you. So they made these people come out unprotected against a government that they know for sure will shoot its population because it has done so time and time again in history with no backup. And they continue to lie. It's not by accident. They're not taking Tibor Nagy out they of contest. It, though, they take his things, yeah. they create a narrative.